Immediately following the slightly rocky second integrated flight test, SpaceX leaped into action. Their swift repairs and cutting-edge upgrades at the Starbase launch site for the third test flight are nothing short of thrilling. Moreover, they're gearing up with brand new ships and boosters at the production site, setting the stage for upcoming missions that promise jaw-dropping spectacle. Join us as we plunge into the latest electrifying developments from Starbase and unveil the thrilling Starship updates brought to you by SpaceX, NASA and Elon Musk himself. SpaceX started fixing the orbital launch mount, which sustained minor damage during Starship liftoff. For the past two weeks, teams have been inspecting and repairing the launch mount clamps, quick disconnect, and other key elements of the structure. No major replacements were spotted, meaning the launch mount did not experience significant damage. The water deluge steel plate, according to Elon Musk, is in good shape and no refurbishment is needed. It looks like the launch tower arms sustained minor damage during the November launch. Some repairs and upgrades are currently being made to the arms. SpaceX is currently undertaking a significant launch site upgrade. They are focused on replacing the vertical storage tanks at the tank farm with horizontal ones. The vertical tanks were installed in 2021. They were built from the same stainless steel used to construct starships and super heavies. The stainless steel tanks have a protective outer covering with insulation in between them to minimize heat leakage. Three of the eight vertical tanks are designed for storing liquid oxygen, one for storing water, and two each for storing liquid methane and liquid nitrogen. However, the liquid methane tanks failed safety tests and were later repurposed to store water. SpaceX then installed eight horizontal tanks adjacent to the vertical tanks to supply methane to the launch vehicle. The vertical tanks sustained damage during the first and second integrated flight tests. Even though SpaceX repaired the damage without much effort, they are now planning to replace the entire custom-built vertical tanks with more advanced horizontal tanks. A typical cryogenic storage tank comprises an inner stainless steel tank and an outer carbon steel shell. The tank is vacuum insulated to minimize evaporation losses and contains redundant pressure relief devices as a safety precaution to prevent overpressurization. SpaceX had already installed several pedestals close to the horizontal methane tanks to support the next set of tanks. Space for nine horizontal tanks was set up at that location. Five giant horizontal tanks arrived at Starbase last week and were set up on the pedestals prepared for them. Once all nine tanks are in place, SpaceX will disconnect all the pumps, heat exchangers, pipes, and valves from the vertical tanks and connect them to the horizontal ones. All rocket tests on the launch mount, including spin prime, cryoproof, static fire, and integrated flight tests, must be paused during this phase. Since the tanks are horizontal, they will be much safer from debris thrown during rocket liftoff compared to the vertical tanks. Moreover, the tanks will be protected by a strong wall separating the launch pad and the tank farm. It is currently unclear whether SpaceX plans to operationalize horizontal tanks before the next launch. According to Elon Musk, Flight 3 hardware should be ready to fly by the end of this month. However, the launch will only happen after the FAA completes a mishap investigation into the second flight, ensures SpaceX completes all the necessary corrective actions, and issues a launch license. The third launch will be further delayed if SpaceX wants the new horizontal tanks to be in operation for Flight 3. As per current developments, it looks like Starship 28 and Super Heavy Booster 10 will be launched next. Booster 10, which has completed its cryogenic proof tests, is currently inside the Mega Bay, waiting for engine installation. Ship 28, with all its engines installed, is inside the High Bay and is getting ready for static fire tests. The flight profile of the Starship's third integrated flight test was made public in a November FCC filing. The booster's trajectory will be similar to that planned for the second integrated test flight. After stage separation, the booster will perform a partial return and land in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, Starship, after attaining an altitude of 235 kilometers, will perform a powered targeted landing in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX plans to demonstrate high data rate communication with the vehicles via Starlink satellites during the third mission. Since the second flight test was not entirely successful, SpaceX may alter the plans and follow the same Flight 2 mission profile for the third mission. If that's the case, instead of the Indian Ocean, the ship will splash down in the Pacific Ocean, near Kauai. Recently, Musk posted on X that the ships currently inside the high bay are the last of the first-generation starships. This indicates SpaceX's intention to modify the starship design, transforming them into much-improved second-generation vehicles. In my previous video, I explained some of the potential design modifications that SpaceX may make to its upcoming starship prototypes. Now, let's talk about some of the points left out in that episode. 
Musk mentioned that version 2 of the ship would hold more propellant, reduce dry mass, and improve reliability, but he did not specify much about the features of future Starship variants. However, we may deduce from his previous tweets that the next Starships will have three more Raptor vacuum engines and propellant tanks that are at least 5 to 10 meters longer. A third generation of Raptor engines is under development at SpaceX's McGregor test facility. They will offer more thrust, a higher specific impulse, and many other improvements compared to their predecessors. Starship is currently 50 meters tall and features six Raptors. The more advanced third-generation Raptors, an increase in the number of engines and a greater propellant capacity, will increase the Starship's total thrust and allow it to launch more payloads into orbit. SpaceX might also redesign the forward flaps to improve the moment arm and reduce or remove undesirable aerodynamic characteristics. In 2021, Musk stated that they plan to shrink the forward flaps, move them closer together and more towards the tip of the ship's nose, and angle them toward the leeward side. Those relatively minor changes mean that a portion of Starship's forward flaps will no longer be directly subjected to re-entry heating, which might enable SpaceX to do away with the static aero covers that encircle the forward flaps and shield sensitive components from superheated plasma and gas. Upgrades to the stainless steel currently used to build the ships and boosters, as well as new and stronger welds, can also be expected in future Starship variants. The upcoming second-generation Starships will incorporate upgrades derived from insights gained in recent integrated flight tests and will continue to evolve based on lessons learned from the upcoming tests. As per Musk, Ship 32 will be the final first-generation Starship. Until last week, parts of Ships 33 and 34 were in the ringyard, awaiting stacking. However, SpaceX has recently commenced scrapping those sections. This means that SpaceX dropped plans to fly ships 33 and 34, and ships from 35 onward would feature the upgrades mentioned before. We have some latest updates regarding the first crewed landing of NASA's Artemis mission, which will involve a Starship lunar lander. A report published on November 30 by the Government Accountability Office reveals that the lunar landing, which was originally planned for late 2025, would now only occur in early 2027. The report blames slow progress on both the Starship human landing system and new lunar spacesuits from Axiom Space. As per the report, Starship is having a number of issues that limit its progress and threaten its ability to support an Artemis III mission in 2025. Those issues include an ambitious schedule, delayed progress on key events, and significant technical work pending. Two key technical milestones that remain outstanding are confirmation of the performance of the Raptor engine and demonstration of in-space cryogenic propellant transfer. NASA officials informed the Government Accountability Office that the Lunar Lander's critical design review cannot begin until the propellant transfer demonstration is completed. Regarding Axiom Space's lunar spacesuit, the report says that the company is still in the early stages of suit development and missed a key preliminary design review deadline that was scheduled to take place in November. As the report points out, SpaceX must complete a significant amount of complex technical work in the coming months and years to support the Artemis III lunar landing mission. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California on December 1, carrying 25 spacecraft on board. Stage separation happened 2 minutes and 30 seconds after liftoff. The rocket's first stage then came back to Earth, and 6 minutes later, it landed on landing zone 4 at Vandenberg. It was SpaceX's 250th successful recovery of an orbital-class rocket. Meanwhile, the rocket's upper stage continued to carry its payloads into orbit. The mission's primary payload was the first South Korean spy satellite, 425 Project EOIR. The 800 kg reconnaissance satellite features electro-optic and infrared sensors with a resolution of 30 cm. The satellite is capable of scouting targets in any weather condition, even at night. South Korea is planning to launch four additional spy satellites by 2025 on board Falcon 9 rockets. Another notable satellite launched on Friday's mission was the Educational Irish Research Satellite 1, built by students from University College Dublin. Also on board were a variety of commercial satellites built by various space agencies and universities. Falcon 9's upper stage deployed all 25 satellites into an 800-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit. Amazon recently signed a contract with SpaceX for three Falcon 9 launches to support deployment plans for the company's Project Kaper Low Earth Orbit Satellite Broadband Network. Amazon is planning a constellation of 3,236 satellites in low Earth orbit, and the company needs to launch half of its planned first-generation constellation into orbit by July 2026 to meet an FCC deadline. 
Last year, Amazon signed contracts worth billions of dollars with Arianespace, Blue Origin, and the United Launch Alliance for 83 launches to support the deployment of the Kaper satellites. All three launch vehicles Amazon relies on are still in development and experiencing delays. In August, Amazon shareholders filed a suit against the board over the decision, alleging that they did not even consider SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. The complaint claims that by excluding SpaceX, Bezos and his management team minimized bid competition for the launch agreements and likely committed Amazon to spending hundreds of millions of dollars more than it would have otherwise had to. Amazon's move to purchase launches from SpaceX came days before the December 4 deadline to defend itself in court against the shareholder lawsuit. The company did not disclose more information about the SpaceX launch contract beyond a brief blog post published on December 1. A Russian Progress ship carrying supplies and equipment bound for the International Space Station blasted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on Friday, December 1. Launched atop a Soyuz rocket, the Progress MS-25 spacecraft carried nearly 2,500 kilograms of cargo to the ISS. It was the 86th mission of the Progress cargo capsule. Eight minutes and 45 seconds after liftoff, the spacecraft separated from the rocket's upper stage, spread its solar wings, and began its journey towards the orbiting laboratory. If all goes well, after a two-day journey, the Progress capsule will catch up with the ISS on December 3rd and navigate itself into a docking with the Poisk module on the Russian half of the station. A couple of hours after the resupply ship docks at the space station, Russian cosmonauts will unload cargo and time critical science experiments from the spacecraft. The spacecraft will remain docked at the orbiting laboratory for the next couple of months before departing with a load of trash that is no longer required aboard the orbital outpost. The spacecraft will eventually burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.